that set up. Set up. Alright, so we are streaming at the moment, so we're going to get started here. Make sure that all can be seen. There we go. And load. There we go. Alright then. Uh, let me know if you guys need me to speak. I will be putting myself on mute for the time being. Very good. So these are the tales of the fall and rise of House Sukita. A thing on house with a legendary story that we shall be going through together. But first, we are going to begin our first tale, Battle at the Fort of the Fallen, on the planet Bamoth 2 in the uh, Bamoth star system. And, uh-oh, uh, shoot, hold on. Get into my groove and then I freaking... No, no. There we go. My monitor was not working properly. Our gathering of officers have come back from the from a battle most fierce against the dreaded AI mastermind Archon, fighting alongside the Tenth Fleet's the Tenth Expeditionary Fleet's uh, forces. And although uh, Chancellor Martok was uh, defeated in open battle, these officers proved themselves with great valor and honor and have been invited back to the seat of power of House Subgutta to be uh, recognized for their efforts and to be assigned to the flagship of House Subgutta as it is a house that is on the rise to power. Have we served together already or no? Uh, this is your first time meeting each other. You uh, you just knew that you were going to meet with the uh, lore master of the who was going to give you the award uh, at the near at a uh, bar in uh, Bumath Central City. So this is the first time each of you meeting each other. Oda will go in. Do I know what this lore master looks like? Uh, you actually see here already seated inside. Whoop, I'll mark her here. I don't know why I put her there. An Orion female. Lore singer Sasir. Odd. Uh, Tarkin probably follows next, and what you see is a grizzled old, old um, Klingon with uh, greys through his hair and longish beard. Um, he scans the room, um, taking it all in, uh, probably eyeing out who else has been invited here. Um, yeah, and just stands uh, watching. 
Odal will stride will stride to the lore singer. I am Oda, son of Kolek. Honorable Ahad, it is a pleasure to meet you. I've heard much about you. Your the father speaks mine. highly of your efforts. The honor is mine, Warsinger. Barkeep, blood wine. We'll sit beside Hot Oda, and I will gesture for a blood wine as well. Several bottles of blood wine are brought over by the barkeep to the table. What time of day is it? Uh, mid morning. Does it matter? We're cling on. <laughs> uh, stop! Stop the uh, bar winch. She goes by and get a rocket. Rock to Gino. It's right there. She points to a bunch of mugs steaming away. Ah, I clop. I'm still on ship's time. For me, it's mid... It's mid-evening. Well, apparently, since we're here, we'll be back on ship's time sooner. I look at, uh, Keldar, who's sat down beside me. I am Oda, son of Kolek. Keldar, son of Karak. You have been War. called home to be awarded as well? Indeed. Let us hope our next op opponents are more honorable than those machines. Indeed. Uh, Tarkin will, um, after observing the room, will walk over to these gathering officers. Um, he eyes them out. Um, are you all wearing um, like symbols of House of Kita? Yeah, I mean, uh, Oda is in KDF uniform and armor with uh, his uh, house sickle on the, I think they wear it on the left arm. Yeah, I'm in uniform as well. Um, Tarkin will also be in uniform and will have um, um, the sigil of House Rasa. Um, hello, um, I am Tarkin of House Rasa. I see there are none of my housemate, house members here gathered to be honored. House Rasa, is your house that has built the new flagship? Yes, we have built many things, many inventions, great and small. This shall not be the last. Well spoken. I'm Oda, son of Kola. Come, sit. This is the lore singer of House Sapta. Uh, What's this here? Eyes around. Uh, I don't think we met before. I'm Tarkin. And what, what brings you here, lore singer? I'm here to administer the rights of decoration upon honorable warriors who have served House of Gitta in the Empire. And to educate you on the finer points of what it means to be an honored warrior of Subgutta. Even if you are of a different house, your contributions must be recognized. Well, um, uh, you should not delay any longer. Uh, us warriors don't have much time. Where are the drinks? I do not have my blood wine. Sasir points to one of the bottles on the table. And actually reached out to grab one for herself. Takes a swig of it and puts it down again. Oh, oh that's one way to wake up. Ha! 
certainly the vintage is nothing to brag about, but it will do. Tarkin just downs one um, silently and then slams um, the empty mug onto the table. Well, I guess I'm the last to arrive. I walk in, still in, apparently still in Starfleet uniform, seeing as I just was dropped off by my ship at the request of the High Council. Various Klingons in the room give Torg uh, uh, an eye, because the moth is... It's one of the older colonies of the Klingon Empire, but it, uh, it's definitely not a tourism destination for uh, Starfleet. But I have quite the uh, gruesome look to me because I still have Borg implants on my face. So, yeah. Do we know of Torg? You've been told the, of the name and what he looks like, so his face will ring a bell. The uniform, he's... You were told he was a La in the KDF, but uh, he's dressed as a commander for uh, Starfleet. Hey, Razor, can you beat yourself? You got a lot of background noise coming through right now. Uh, yeah, let me just mute the computer. Yeah, there you go. So for some reason, I, the uh, World 20 was uh, throwing off music. Not sure why, <laughs> but I cut. But I do come bearing a big old bottle of whiskey. Well, this Klingon be, style whiskey. This must uh, be the final member of our group. He appears to be from Starfleet. Is he from the KDF? My sharp hearing picks up the chatter and like at first table. I was originally KDF, my friends. And now you wear the uniform of our ally. You were, with the, you were with the Tenth Fleet against the Archon? Yes. And you are welcome. I am of the, uh, uh, the very honorable ship, the Nelly Bly. He also Speaking bears lineage ship. to House Martok. Aye. When I was freed from the dreaded Borg, the honorable House Martok brought me within their ranks. Artok is the most honorable chancellor this the Empire has seen in many years. Subkita has very well been the ally. Perhaps House Raza will rise as well. I feel honored to be among my Klingon brethren once again grab a bottle of blood wine and to all of our houses and to the Chancellor raise the toast I will meet the toast and be drink deeply as do I now Lord Singer we are all gathered Officers, please stand together. I shall transport us to the Fort of the Fallen. So. Tasir reaches over to her uh, wrist and taps at a control panel there. All of you are beamed away straight out of the bar, much to the mild annoyance of everyone inside. Oops, don't loot. What are you doing? Stop. Stop. One beam's fine. We didn't 
even pay our tab. Ha ha ha. Please don't pay for drinks. Suck it. <laughs> Oh, that's not on this at all. <coughs> all of you are beamed into a facility with a which seems to be largely a armor a almost a small garrison with a handful of uh Sukuta soldiers in attendance. Check out the scene. Ah, no, not that one, not that one. Shoo. There we go. As you look around you, you can see uh, various windows looking out to the various directions around. Uh, this looks like a, gar a large guard post with a uh, transporter pad in the middle. Uh, outside, you can look, you can see the ocean, uh, Bamoth, and across that, the large city of uh, Bamoth Central City, the capital. Uh, inland, you can see the rocky, mountainous regions of the area, and looming on the tallest mountain on the island is a massive uh, black glowing monument the fort of the fallen have we been here before uh anyone of house of Gutta would have came here for uh uh special events so marriages uh and uh if anyone died who was important to the house they were uh, a statue was built of them and uh commemorated in the uh Temple and the fort. Okay. For those of you not of uh, Subgutta, this is probably the first time you've ever been here because it's restricted. This is Subgutta land. Like it's their private domain. The temple has the castle. This temple, I keep calling it a temple. The fortress uh, has all the trappings of the old empire. Uh, before the days of Kirk and uh, even Starfleet, great monuments of uh, military might uh, were built on various on some of the old colonies to remember Kronos and to remember Kalis. Well, in this case, this place is not dedicated to Kalis, but to uh, Sukuta's fallen friend. To Sukuta's fallen what? Friend. Um, can I use, um, my, uh, well, I'm going to use the focus here of, um, maybe Klingon history to recall any knowledge of this place not being, um, part of House Sukita? Uh, give me, a reason plus, uh, command difficulty of two. Okay, um, I don't have a score for command yet, so... Um, once can I? So I can assign either three, two, two, one. Is that right? Um, I will assign two to that. So that's two for command, eleven for reason. So target thirteen. Uh, focus. No, it did not succeed. You've heard stories of your elders having gone to this place for special meetings, uh, but you've never been here before, and many of the stories of this island are shrouded in legend. Uh, supposedly, one legend says something about uh, Sugutta once uh, took a bat lift and split the mountain in twain, and there formed the, the fortress. That sort of thing. Very outlandish stories. Whether or not they're actually true depends how much faith you have in the old legends. 
Oda will cock an eyebrow at the lore singer. Follow me. Do not stray from the path. The terrain here does not welcome uh, interlopers. Zoom out. The road underneath your feet almost seems to sing as your boots slam into it with a metallic clang as if announcing your every step your every movement the road seems to shimmer uh, even at, under the uh, morning sun Can somebody move my character? Because I can't get him to move. Double check, make sure. Yeah, okay. Good. And as you get closer and closer to the fortress, it looms bigger and bigger, as if this it's its own small city. The terrain around the uh, fortress looks, well, very rocky uh, with pools of smoking liquid. You see no farmland, no housing, not even a garrison. And you can see for miles around except for the mountain terrain. Like there's lots of open land in various directions around the fortress. You get the feeling that if someone really wanted to, they could probably peer at you from the transporter area from the temple, uh, from the fortress. How long of a walk is it from where we beamed in to the fortress proper? Uh, wow. It is a long six hour hike. As Lor as Cecir isn't real, the Lore Singer isn't moving terribly fast, but she's not going terribly so. It's a very casual walk, almost ceremonial. And this is a uh, standard when we've been here before. This is the same route we've taken. Yep. You know, uh, those of us who get to know that if anyone tried to stray and cut across, there are various uh, local hazards between uh, beasts and just the natural uh, like pools of acid, rock faces that are trapped to fall away the minute you uh, look at them the wrong way. It's a very dangerous environment. Yeah. Controlling the one way, forcing people to approach from one direction only. Seems a wise precaution for such an important place. Wait, why am I doing this the hard way? Shrink, darn you. <laughs> Stepping into the fortress itself, there seems to be only one path. As large and as imposing as the building is, 
There is, it is filled with countless statues of various species of Klingons, young and old, people in various uniforms holding various weaponry, and under each is a plaque indicating what they did and how they died for House of Gutta. Across the center of the Grand Chamber is a carpet uh, with the hand-stitched uh, emblem of uh, House of Gutta, leading to two stone statues, uh, three stone statues. One, up front, is that of Subgutta himself. Another is Kalis, with his hand at uh, Subgutta's back, as if urging him forward. And behind him it appears to be a Klingon who has a uh, the old uh, genetic scarring of the smooth head uh, who is the sworn friend of Subgutta who perished long ago. Flanking them are two uh, giant uh, Klingon women who seem to be ready to charge forward and assault, assault anyone who uh, would dare desecrate the statues. For their three statues are bigger than all the rest, towering over you. The Klingon women are, are actual women or statues? Statues. Okay. Though they look so well crafted, they look like they can move at any moment. Very nice. Um, does the law singer uh, just move forward, or is she seem, does she seem occupied with, I guess, the statues or some ritual at the front there? Uh, she walks down the middle of the carpet and stops just short uh, where the carpet ends. Today, as honored warriors, I shall tell you the tale of Subgutta. There once was a warrior. He and a friend came to blows over a matter whom had the most valor. It was a friendly fight, like many others of its kind. Closed fists, bare teeth, and a dagger drawn. However, the warrior struck the other in error and killed him. For the crime of murdering his friend, he was arrested. He was exiled onto the Isle of Fire, a rocky isle surrounded by magma flow meant to dissuade any to flee, or any to approach, to flee the prisoners, to free the prisoners held within. It was a place where the soon to be punished would await their final death and disgrace. This warrior thought of his fallen friend and the false charges against him. He refused to die on some rock for a wrong he never did. He refused for his friend to simply be known as some slain barroom brawler. He bared his teeth, closed his fists once more, and battled his way free of the house that imprisoned him. The fort that held the warrior was rallied, and its many guard pursued in their mighty numbers. The warrior ran to the edge of the river of fire its heat searing his face in warning of his death. Behind the warrior were well over 100 guard who shouted their promises to slay the warrior, to die by the blade or the fire. The warrior remembered mighty Kalis, a, mortar, a mortal who defied all expectations and showed feats of strength and prowess only matched by his wisdom. If one Klingon could achieve greatness, 
Why not this warrior, on a quest to honor his fallen friend and stand for truth? With that belief held in his heart and soul, he leapt toward the river of fire. One hundred guards stopped short of the glowing magma and marveled as the warrior hung in the air and seemed to fly over the heat. In a single bound, he cleared the river of fire, burned all over but alive. Exhausted from the feat, the guards eventually boarded ships and crossed to capture the warrior in his exhaustion. The warrior was brought before the house leader of the land, for the warrior had committed the crime of escaping from captivity, he smiles. The house leader stared at the warrior before him and listened as the guards recounted his escape. The warrior ro roared with new life, and it took four guards to hold him to the ground. By Kalis, my fallen friend, and my very blood I swear, I did not murder not one of your guards or my friend. I fled not in cowardice, but to honor my friend, so they may live forever in Stovacor. Eventually, the house leader waved off the guards and seemed to stand alone in their own house and spoke quietly as if alone with the warrior. None have ever escaped the Isle of Fire, he said. None have lied to me and lived, and I can think of only one other Klingon who could have leapt that river and lived. Even Kalis had never done so, but you have. If you do not have the blood of Kalis, then surely do you act as he did. Your words I will trust, your quest I will allow, but only if you rise as a warrior of my house. That day, whatever the warrior's name before then, the warrior was forever known and remembered as the warrior Subkita. Subkita would rise to be the leader of his very own house, who would rally warriors to his banner and glory to his name. True to his word, he built a great fortress in honor of his friend, the Fort of the Fallen. Within was built these three statues, a Subgitta, batleth in hand, facing our entrance. One of Kalis pressing his hand to Subgitta's back, urging him forward to glory. The third, his friend Artur, standing silent and watching. And before, at his feet, it reads, He died not in some accident. He died not over mere petty words. He died and inspired a house in all its warriors. Should any die a friend of this house, let them forever be remembered here. On this world of Amoth does it stand, a testament to warriors of old, the resting place of our house founder, and a pilgrimage site of a warrior that took inspiration of Kalis and achieved greatness. Remember the warrior Sugitta and all his brave progeny forever. And then she produces a box from her uh, clothing, and inside, and she opens it, and inside you can see what looks to be uh, glowing red rings uh, that are like uh, no bigger than uh, your fist. Take these and be known as friend of House of Gutta. May you be honored here when you die. Do I know where these are supposed to be worn? Are they like armlets or? Uh, you would wear it on the. Uh, it would be attached roughly where you would put the your house badge. It's a medal that you would wear. Oh okay. It's a fairly big honking one though. Okay. Most Klingon metal medallions are fairly are somewhat small, either gray or golden color. But Hasugita likes to show off a little. Um. So yeah, I uh, reach forward and pick up. One of the rings. I, Oda, son of Kolek, of House Subkitta, pledge my loyalty to my house, to the Empire, and put on my, uh, the, put the medal in its appropriate place. And then I step kind of to the side to let the others. Submit it. Uh, 
Tark and we'll step forward. Um, we'll look at the ring, um, don it on, and then says, I, Tarkin of House Raza, ally of House Sakita, will assist them in bringing honor his allies. Then take it with him. Torg steps forward to accept to take his ring. I, Torg of House Mortok, friend to the House Sakita, pledge my honor to the house. As he dons his. Then something dire happens. There's a radiation trifle. That's never good. As all of you stand together, standing in one of the most sacred places on Ben Moth, an ancient honored place where many great warriors have passed. Out the door, a loud rumbling can be heard. The sky changes from the rather peaceable blue to a roaring fire. The fireball seems to engulf the entire sky. The entire horizon is nothing but fire. As a great, large uh, station plummets into the moth central city. The city erupts into flame and the city and all within it are surely annihilated in the massive explosion. Do, do we see any of this, or are we, do we only see the explosion? The, the explosion is so big, it's you can see it out the front uh, the front doors that you guys walked in. Like, it's it, it, the, the, the uh, doors were left open, so you can kind of get some breath air, uh, fresh air in here. And that's what you guys all see as you guys were standing there, and it's just this massive fire. You can even feel the heat pulsing out from the explosion from across the, uh, uh, from across the water. So... The station, a station fell and crashed into Bamoth City. Uh, it would appear so. Uh, Oda will. Uh, I don't know. Do Klingons use comm badges or still handheld communicators? Use comm badges. Right. Oda will hit his hit his comm badge. Uh, Oda to Raptor, report. You hear nothing but subspace static. Bamoth Control, come in. Charging up the stairs, a gang of Klingons with Batlet's raids enter the chamber. And they don't look like they're here to honor your uh, achievements. <laughs> Death, the house of Gutta! They shout. Shit, I'm not armed. Um, do we recognize them? 
What's up? Uh, give me insight security difficulty one. Who? Whoever wants to try to recognize the uh, these Klingons. Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out what the role. There should be a macro in roll twenty you can use. Yeah, I'm looking at it in the. I see rollable tables, but that's about it. Uh, I'm used to having everything like built into the character sheet. You said that was inside security, GM. Uh, yes. What's the diff? Uh, one. <laughs> oh, Tarkin took a swing at it. Uh, it does not recognize these uh, Klingons in the heat of battle. T20. Um, oh. One, two, and let me check Keldar's sheet here. Five, nine, security Six, three. Nine. So two successes. Thirteen. Yes. Are you tracking up? Momentum or shall I? Uh, you can track it if you want. Okay. So it's difficulty one, so I'm seeing... Two momentum generated so far. Okay. <laughs> well, um, shouldn't... Did Keldar generate... Yeah, there's two there. One for Oh, wait, me. one, two, three. Yeah, two there, one for you, yeah. 2d20 shots. I believe those are both misses. Now, since I am unarmed, I go to one of the statues and rip off one of the swords to fight with. Okay. Uh, at this point, we will uh, start combat proper. Uh, so, Targ, uh, Torg, sorry. Uh, you're doing movement to move over to one of the statues. Um, and I will rip off one of the sword or two of the swords to fight with. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually, ch you can do one or two things. You can either do a roll to see if you're able to pull them off, or you can just spend uh, momentum and or threat to get the things that you're looking for. So you are looking for like just regular mech lifts, like just blades, or are you looking to grab a bat lift? I'm just trying to grab a damn sword. Okay. So they'll either be one momentum, or it would be a... Uh, we would say fitness plus security and eh, opportunity is one, so I'll make a diff one. Kazo, were either of your roles there a success for inside security? Okay, so how the hell am I going to... Or should I just roll the 2d20 and see what happens? Yeah, that works as well. So I'm not sure what that equates to, so... Uh, for Kazo... 
just gonna resolve that role before I forget. Insight, security. Uh, Kazo, to do that security role, you would've had to assign something to your security score. Right. Is in I know my character is currently not armed, is there anybody else who is not armed as well? Uh, we are Klingons. We have extended equipment. <laughs> I mean, I know Klingons are good with their fists and all, but still. Yeah, they each have, as KDF officers, they would all have uh, daggers and uh, disruptor pistols. Seeing as I came from a sh from the Nelly Bly, I did not think to bring anything. One momentum generated there, Oda. Heard. If I, if at all possible. I have two weapons. I have my mechlith and I have a disruptor. I would gladly get Torque. Uh, at the moment, Torque has spent uh, his action arming himself. Um, so one of two things can happen. Either you can spend two momentum, two of the four momentum you've generated to keep the initiative and someone else on your side gets to go, or you spend uh, two for Tor to go again, but the next task he does is at a increased difficulty. Because he's basically trying to rush and go really fast. Uh, I say we spin two to keep the momentum and let somebody else go ahead and go before it has to pass to the bad guys. Correct. I, I concur. So with the 17, am I not that was able to arm myself with the uh, swords from the statue? Yep, you now have uh, mechleths in hand. Uh, you're able to sorry. pry them away from the statue. Alright. Does this group of Cleons seem to have a leader? Uh, it doesn't seem to be. They look to be... Uh... Mostly Bex on a glance. You don't see an op anyone bearing, uh, having an officer's bearing. Uh, uh, just Patak. Okay. Well, since I have an ancestral deck left, I have that with me. Um, and I will charge with Man. all four and try and kill him. Unfortunately, my ancestral blade is sitting in a display case on my ship. This uh, daring security role opposed versus this warrior, this traitor to the house. Yeah, are they wearing house uh, insignia? Uh, now that you're up close and personal, uh, they seem to be wearing uh, house Gamula uh, badges. Uh, They're supposed to be allies. <laughs> Fucking bastards. Okay, so let's go do. Give you a threat for a third die. Uh, let's see. On 15. Oh, no, my daring is 10. So 14 daring security. Right. Yeah. And this one is security. Uh, so three successes, but one of those was four or less, so that's four. So my security is a four. Oh, um, yeah, and I have a focus in the Malkara, which is, I believe, is both armed and unarmed combat form. Yes, I believe so. Warrior will spend a threat to buy himself a die as well. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh really, dude? Uh, I forgot how bad these guys are. Uh, that's one hit, gain two momentum. <laughs> Alright, 
and then damage with my ancestral mechleth gets plus one challenge dice, so a total of seven challenge dice. Cow. And it is vicious. Ugh. I'm gonna spend one momentum to reroll four. Yep. That's better. You slice into him with your ancestral mechleth and down the warrior goes. Screaming in uh, pain from the wounds you've inflicted. Uh, more groaning, less screaming. Klingons, after all. Traitress, talk. Uh, the turn goes to them. That was nice playing with you guys. <laughs> As one charges over his fallen friend without a care in the world and takes a swing at you with his uh, bat left. Uh, Pose daring security. He's going to try a little harder than his friend, though, because, uh, yeah... Two, three, four. And he'll roll that 13 for good measure. Because he's a Klingon warrior. He knows how to fight. Oda, Oda you're looking at uh, five hits, daring security. <laughs> Oda? Sorry, I was I was muted. Ah. Okay, take uh, two threat and one momentum for a total of four dice. Oops, wrong thing. Four dice. That's actually three, four, five successes. Oh, you tied me. Gotta be kidding. <laughs> um, you can succeed at cost. Uh, you'll basically be just taking half damage from the attack as you're kind of leaning into the attack. Or you can lead it stalemate as you're kind of meeting blade to blade and kind of locking blades. Yeah, let's just do the stalemate. The mech left being almost designed to catch a larger blade. Kind of bears his teeth and grrr, tries to force it, but he can't. Turn goes back to you guys. Who's next to try their luck against these warriors? I'll go last. Oh, target's ready to charge into battle. So. Yeah, you, you've done your turn for the round, so you'll have to come in in the next turn in the next round. And Keldar, you might want to turn up your uh, sound. You're very quiet. Um. Okay. So, how do I use these macros? On the macro thing, I. Click where. So in the macros, there should be a task roller bar you can add. A roll, sorry. Oh, shoot, it's not on rollable tables. It's on, um...
Yeah, at the top you can add in bar and it should pop up another one. Uh, for speed, because because it'll take a bit to figure this out, uh, you can just roll two d twenty in uh, using uh, in the bar in the upper left. There's the die indicator. You can just select how many dice you're going to roll to attack. And then forget that last number because that's adding them together is not what matters. It's what each individual die gets. So you compare. So you're trying to shoot one of them with your disruptor, I assume. Yes, correct. Uh, you're shooting this guy, I assume. The one on the front left, this one. Yep. Okay. okay. Um, so the difficulty for that, since you're he's effectively medium range to you, was two. Um, so you're hoping to get two successes. So you compare what each individual d20 rolled to the sum of your control plus security. Okay, so it looks like I have one success, so that was not enough to meet the difficulty. Now, because you're doing this roll, you can have add, you can add the focus of disruptors, unless you already have that focus. I would like to do that. So you can add that to your focus list, and that means that once you have a focus in something, anything that is any d20 that rolls your um, discipline or low equal to your discipline or lower is considered a critical success. So you get two hits instead of just one. So with the focus of disruptors, I have enough successes to hit him. Right. So now we calculate how much damage you do. Um, and you, for a disruptor pistol, uh, you're rolling three challenge dice plus um, your security. Uh, that's how many d6s you roll, basically. I will do so. Um, five, and then an extra one. Okay, so the fours are zero. Six and five are one plus effect. Because you're using a disruptor, they're vicious. So they do, whenever they have an effect, they do an extra damage. That's one, two, three, four. And that two is a two. So one, two, three, four, five, six damage um, to the Klingon. Uh, one of it is absorbed by his armor, but he took at least five stress from one single attack. So he goes down due to the injury as he clutches at his chest and falls to the ground groaning in pain. Excellent. Uh, because uh, the enemy have acted at least once, uh, you can choose to spend two momentum for someone else on your side to go, or you can spend two momentum to try to do something again, but the difficulty's increased by one, or you can let the turn go back to them. Well, do we want to spend two momentum to retain the turn? I don't know. Yeah, we've only got two. Of them. So, save our momentum right now. Okay. Well, sounds like the consensus is to allow the turn to return to them. Okay. This guy runs up, disruptor rifle in hand, and he returns fire. Oh, actually, no, he doesn't. I forgot why they're here. Uh, he ha he has he has to charge you with his bat left. <laughs> uh. Who's he uh, coming at? Yeah. Guy with the pistol, guy with blades out, and a guy who hasn't gotten his blade out. This guy is a brave Klingon and attacks the old Klingon who hasn't pulled his weapon out yet. Uh, so it's a daring security roll for you, Tarkin, and you're rolling against a pose. So it's how it's my amount of hits versus your amount of hits. All right, um, I might use a die for this. Um... Uh, I'll use one momentum to get an extra die, okay. and that'll be, um, was daring security, wasn't it? So 13. He'll spend to meet you, because he doesn't want to be shown up by some old codger. <laughs> um, I don't have a focus. 
Uh, you can have a focus in unarmed combat if you want, or melee combat. Uh, well, melee combat's a little too general, but like unarmed combat. Um, no, I'll leave it for now, so... Okay. Three successes there. Oh no. Three hits for him, it's a tie. <laughs> Damn, blow for blow. So he swings his batleth at you, and you, empty-handed, are able to hold him steady. You can uh, take a complication to win the tie, and the complication I'll give you is that he'll do half his damage to you. Uh, so he still rolls his damage, but you'll take half of it, and you can do unarmed strike damage. Or you can just keep it at the stalemate where he swung it at you, and you're kind of holding him from hitting you. I think I'll just hold it. Um and keep it at that and he just laughs in his face oh, you kind of best Hasraza you traitors traitors of Gamola uh, the turn goes back to you guys uh, can I move or uh, for I your uh, everyone in a round acts at least once and then, uh, that's why I'm marking each of you with a little marker, uh, to indicate that you've gone. Oh. And once everyone on both sides has gone, everyone's turns reset, and then you can act again. Got it. No, I was just uh, wondering if we'd gone through the rotation already. Yeah, no. Not yet. Oops. I think Tarkin will react, and will actually move his minor action, and action is to guard the Lord Singer. Okay. Uh, uh, as a miner, do you wish to draw any weapons out? Um, that might be a good idea. <laughs> um, yes, I will draw um, my dagger. I think that's the only thing that I would have here. And yeah, um, I don't know what the guard action was actually. Um, what is it? Uh, difficulties. Zero. To guard someone. Oh yeah, it's actually a thing, isn't it? It's actually a test, rather, I should say. It doesn't say what the task it is, then. Wait, I might do this the hard way. I have a cheat sheet. <laughs> I literally have a sheet that tells me all the combat stuff. <laughs> that was dumb. Da, 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 da. Guard. Uh, d uh, difficulty one to guard an ally. So you would uh, perform, you would roll, um, since you're using your dagger to defend them, it'd be daring security against a difficulty of one. Okay, so daring security is uh, 12 again. Do, 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 do. Um, that should be two successes, right? Because I rolled a one. Yep. Yeah, the uh, program doesn't catch that. But yeah, you're right. That's two successes. Uh, so you actually generate one momentum. Okay, I'll just bank that. I don't know how to add momentum. Sorry. Oh, no, it's okay. It's... Uh, but yeah, you're able to, now that you're standing in the way and, uh, of anyone approaching Lorsinger, any attack on her is increased by difficulty of one. Uh, plus one, I should say. Is that increased to one? Diff three task, it's now one. Um. Uh, do you guys wish to keep the initiative, or do you wish to, uh, let it go back to them? I'll go back to them again. I say let it go back. Yep. Okay. So this guy's gonna come up to the HUD and get try to say hello to him with a uh, bat lift.
Uh, one, two, three, rolling that 18. One, two, three, four. Cut. All right. They give you uh, a momentum and two threat for four dice again. Ah, wrong thing. <laughs> so, four, it's another tie. <laughs> I guess I pulled out my mech left. <laughs> I mean, uh, I mean, my Doc Tang and blocked together that left. <laughs> As these two guys are trying to get at you, you're holding both of them back. <laughs> uh, turn goes back to you guys. Uh, goes to Rorik. Okay, how far can I cover a distance in a turn? Uh, you can go from uh, up to medium range, which that basically covers this entire chamber. If you wanted to leave the temple, that'd be long range. If you wanted to run out to like the middle of the road, that'd be like extreme. <laughs> No, that's the worst Klingon ever, no. <laughs> Bye, everybody! <laughs> Good luck! <laughs> Let's see. Alright, well, I'd love to get over here. You here? And, yeah, and while traveling, I know this is uh, nonsensical, but while traveling, I would like to fire my disruptor pistol at the target there. So before you get into melee range, you're going to take a shot at him? Correct. Okay, so you minor, you draw your disruptor. Uh, your movement is a move action, if you will. It uh, doesn't cost you anything. And your regular action is shoot. Uh, difficulty of two. Control security. Okay. So I have Roll nothing in my security stat currently. Say again? I currently have a zero on my security stat. So you need to assign one of the other uh, things you have. Uh, you have to assign something to that. Uh, bu -bu uh, so you have an array of three two two one to assign, and once you spent spent, uh, spent one of those, it it's gone. It's because it, it's been assigned somewhere. So what do you want to put into your security stat? Three? Okay. Are you going to have a disruptor focus? Yes. Yep. And you're house subject though, right? Correct. So that'll make you three or four. Yeah, because uh, so get to our warriors so they have a bonus to security. Sweet. So what do I need to roll for this blaster shot? Uh, 2d20. Uh, you can buy more dice with uh, either uh, by either spending momentum or giving me threat. I'll spend the momentum. We get 3d20 okay. now? Yep. I don't roll back. You're rolling against flat di uh, diff. So. Oh, no. Well, here's uh, uh, one thing you can do uh, is... You can invoke a. You can spend your determination point because everyone starts a session with one determination point. Um, you can spend it toward a value. Basically, you would say which value you have um, is the reason why you would normally succeed. Uh, and once you spend that determination point, you would get to reroll all the dice you just rolled. So you can either use the one that you have, or you can create a new value at this point uh, to reflect this moment. Where you showed uh, why you don't miss destructor shots in the temple and all that stuff, <laughs> or you can let the roll uh, stand and it just misses because it won't because it's a it's a task roll target, so you miss the target and that's all. That would happen. Uh, I'll create a uh, value. Always have your captain's back. Yep, I'll take that. Now I get to roll all 3d20 again. So that's a 
read this right, that's three successes. Uh, one, two, three, yep. So you actually generate a momentum. Um, I think it's... Oh, yeah. Is the 13 a success? Oh. I was looking right at a sheet, too. I'm smart. Because the three may be two. Uh, control security? Oh, heck, uh, control security, that's 14, is your target number. One, two, three, uh, plus four. one more, because of, uh... So you one took... more d20? You said you had the disruptor focus? I did, yes. Disruptor. Or I would like to add it if it's an option. Yep, you can. I just wanted to make sure. That's two momentum gain total. Yes. All right, now, uh, Rurik, you roll um, three challenge dice plus your security rating in D6. So you'd ro have rolled a, a total of 7d6, so go ahead and just roll 4d6 to add to what you've already rolled. Yeah. 2-3. There you go. 4, 5, 6. Vicious. Uh, and none of those was a 5 or a 6, so Vicious doesn't kick in. Oh, that's right. It's 5 and 6, one, not 2, one. 3, 4, 5, 6. Six stress. Uh, his armor soaks one of it, but... Uh, five stress is dealt to him, so he goes as he's battling with Oda, he goes down in a heap. As he's shot with disruptor fire. Hope that was your turn. Boop. I think the only people haven't gone are this guy and the lore singer. Yep. Uh, this guy in the back. Um gonna charge over to Rorik and try to slash at him with the bat left. So Rorik, you're rolling your daring security this time, and it's opposed. He's gonna buy a die, because of course he is. His friends are being shot by you. He doesn't like you, though. Uh, one, two, three. Three hits for him. And I only roll two dice, correct? Unless you spend momentum or threat to increase your dice. Yeah, I'll take one. Momentum? What's our momentum count at right now? Uh, two, uh, currently. As of now, two. Oh, God. Ooh. Ooh. One complication. One, two. Now, do you not have that uh, trained from birth? I do. Talent? I'll stop it. Do what? Uh, yes, I do. I'm on the same house. Then you can ignore that complication. I'm going to ignore that complication. <laughs> Darn. I was going to make this hurt super bad, too. Um, unfortunately he hit you. I gained a threat because he got one more than you did. Hey, Razor, would you mind muting yourself? There's a lot of background noise coming through. Uh, One, two, three, four, five. Uh, he actually got a good hit in, but your armor is able to is able to save you, so you're only going to take four stress instead of five, because your armor uh, soaked one of it. Quick question: uh, How much is our maximum stress at this point? 
It's your fitness plus security. Is your max stress. Oh, 516. Okay. I will edit that. So, Rourke, you're down to 11 stress. Ha, ah, I did it. Uh, the Lore Singer presses, uh, stretches out her foot and presses one of the steps of the statue. And out from the statue springs forth a glaive that pops into her hands. With a blue metallic shaft, a red, almost uh, glittering uh, blade at the top with a spiked uh, bottom end. And she yells, Oda, catch! And she flings the thing across the room. <laughs> okay, we're going to have to roll to catch it. Whee! Uh, it is a difficulty... We'll call it diff two, uh... Daring uh, security. Okay. Uh, take a momentum for a third dice. I probably don't want to miss this catch. <laughs> don't really think I have a focus for this yet. Hooray! Get the movement out of that. No, I don't. You're able to catch the as uh, she kind of she holds it back like it's a javelin, and she hucks it across the room at you, and you let the blade go by for a second and catch it by the shaft. Okay. You now have in your possession the Glaive of Subkitta, an ancestral weapon of uh, Subkitta's. It's now in the main character uh, slot. Right, it's my it was difficulty two, right? The stats listed in that, by the way, are without your ancestral blade modifier. That's just it as a as a heavy blade. Okay, okay. Uh, that's Lord Singer's turn. Everyone in the turn has acted. So let me take all these markers off. Uh, unfortunately, the last person to move was. The player side, so the first move in the new round is the bad guys. Did we generate momentum from that last one? Just uh, you have generated one momentum from that. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, one momentum. Unless he has a focus in catching things. I do, I, I do not, and chose not to add that focus. Although, who knows? Make it super specific. Catching claves. <laughs> <laughs> this Terran Sport baseball. Um, uh, da, 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 da. So, this guy uh, in front of you, Oda. Swings, uh, not at you, but tries to knock the uh, blade you just caught out of your hands. Oh, no, no. Uh, so it's still an opposed daring security roll. It's just that instead of doing damage to you, he's choosing to disarm you of the weapon. Gotcha. Uh, he'll spend a threat. 
Buy himself an extra die. Uh, he'll re-roll that 16. Three hits. Okie dokie. So... I will... Let's tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you three uh, threat for a total of four dice. Um, I'm also activating my to battle talent. So if I win, I get three bonus momentum, all of which has to be dumped into extra damage. <laughs> okay. Friggin' okay. <laughs> Focus. Yep, it applies with this weapon. It's a Klingon weapon. Oh, oh, God. oh, oh, oh. <clears throat> that's awful. All right. Um, so I will spend my determination on. Value of, let's see, I'm trying to keep from getting an ancestral weapon tossed out of my hand. Um, So what are you spending towards, sorry? Uh, I'm trying to fi uh, figure out what uh, the value I'm going to institute is. Um... <coughs> and then what would fit with trying to... Well, it's, dar it's, it's daring security, so... Spin it on, uh, hit them hard and hit them fast. Very good, I'll take that. Okay. So I'm going to reroll the two complications. <laughs> well, I got it down to one complication and I've at least got a total of three successes. <laughs> uh, do you wish to... Uh quash that uh, last complication with two momentum. Yeah, sure, let's. Uh, you are currently tied with him. Uh, so unless you're willing to take a complication, uh, you're deadlocked again. Uh, let's just be deadlocked. Okay. Okay. Uh, goes back to you guys. Uh, I imagine Torg would want to get in there and start stabbing somebody. Hell yes. Do you want to run over to where uh, this guy is? Oh, actually, there's a guy right in front of you. Uh, what am I doing? <laughs> I got one right in front of me, so... <laughs> hey, Keldar, you deal with this. Bye. No, uh... <laughs> as soon as I deal with that 
talk. I'll go and help help my friend. So, since he's within reach, I'm going to attack. So that's two d twenty. Yep. Unless you want to give me threat for extra dice. Ah, what the hell? I'll take an extra dice. Okay, I gain one threat. Oh, so that's three, 3d20. He doesn't want to get stabbed, so he's going to try to buy a die back. Just reroll that 19. One, two, three, four. Oh, no. Four hits to your one, two, I imagine. Uh, unless you have a focus. You might have a focus. You have a focus in uh, blade combat? Uh, or some weapons uh, and tactics. Weapons and tactics. I should, I should put combat weapons and tactics, too. Melee weapon and tactics would be a new focus to take, yeah. Uh, Put that in real quick. Yeah. Uh, one, two, three. Uh, he still has one more on you. Uh, you could attempt to spend a determination point to reroll that night to try to reroll that nineteen. Okay. Uh, to what value? It can either be to the value you have if you if it makes sense, or you'd have to create a new one that does make sense for the situation. I have just the one. Yeah, I think it's, uh, if I remember correctly, it's uh, Never Leave Your Batleth Behind, which unfortunately, in this case, you did. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm adding a new one. Okay. The thing is, every Klingon on Star Trek is always shouting this, it just seems appropriate. What's the value? Today is a good day to die. <laughs> From my opponent. <laughs> I'll take it, sure. Roll 1d20. I assume you don't want to re-roll the two things that hit. So, uh, hit. Or no. Uh, oh no, I thought your security was higher. Wait, hold on. You're a Martok. Your um, security is actually five. My what? Your security would be five, not four. What's that? <laughs> Fixed. <laughs> Um, uh, well, it's going to five for some reason. Hmm? So it keeps going to five for some reason, even though I put in it, put it in as a four. Oh, no, I'm, I'm upping it to a five because it's, <laughs> I'm the one who's changing it. <laughs> oh, okay. Never <laughs> mind. Because you got a plus one bonus from, uh, being from a warrior house. Ah. Got it. Yeah. Uh, so that math is one, two, three, four. Versus therefore, so it's a deadlock. Unless you're willing to take a complication where he'll do half damage to you, uh, and you do full damage to him. That would fit under uh, today is a good day to die. Okay. Uh, so I'll take, I'll take the half damage. All right. Uh, we'll roll your damage. Um, you're rolling as blade, so, so... That's, that's two challenge dice plus security, so that'd be seven d six. Or yep. Rolling. Ooh. I'm assuming One, two. he's dead. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
8, 9, 10, 11. He gets to roll back. Um, he, he's 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 gonna go down. Yeah, he's he's all kinds of dead. Um, he rolls five back. Can I guess for facing a vicious warrior. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, one of that is absorbed by your armor, and I forgot, actually, uh, Rorik, you actually suffer two less because you have, um, Brucklow, so you, because this is non-lethal damage, you actually have extra two resistance, because they're not swinging to kill at the moment, they're just trying to disable you guys. So... Yeah, uh, but I'm swinging to kill, so that's the difference. Oh, you're swinging to kill? Oh, whoops. Uh, if you swing to kill, the GM gains th one threat, so you know. Because that does negate their uh, rock roll. A half of fifteen would would have been would have been seven or eight, not nine. No, no, you don't add up with the d six roll. Um, basically, in STA, uh, one and two are what they are what they say on the dice. Um, three and four are are worth zero. Five and six are worth one plus an effect. And because he's using a bat lift, anything with an effect, so a five or six, is actually worth two. Damn. So, so that's okay. how it's nine stress. Yeah, the regular STA uh, thing on the other side, uh, it calculates that automatically. But this is how it's used with regular D6. Got it. I did not know that. Yeah, it's so cool. I didn't... Man, I'm still standing. Uh... Well, you're taking, um, because you've taken at least five stress, because three of that's si soaked, so you're still taking six, six stress, um, you you will either have to spend, give me two threat to avoid the injury, so your character dodged at the last second to avoid being dropped. Um, actually, that's the only thing you can do, really. I think I'm gonna dodge it. Okay. Uh, just so you know, avoid injury is something you can do once per scene. Um, until you have, unless you have a chance to take a turn to step aside and recover and do a recover action. Basically, you take a deep breath and catch your breath to so you can take another injury. So uh, wait, ha wait, hold on, that's wrong. I don't get those two threat because I'm cheating you. You don't take nine damage because this is because of complication. <laughs> You're only taking half of that, so half of nine. <laughs> A round Maybe down is four, minus five, four. three, because it's non-lethal, so you take one stress. Sorry. You're fine. <laughs> he barely hits you. I'm barely phased. Uh, he goes down, though, and he is all kinds of dead. <laughs> As he doesn't groan or nothing, he just hits the carpet and goes silent. Uh, would you guys like to spend to keep the initiative, or do you want to let it go to them? I don't think we have any momentum, do we? You can give me two threat to keep the initiative. I'm not sure you want to do that, because I have quite a bit of threat right now. Yeah, I think we just let it roll over. I agree, let them have it. Uh, so this yeah. guy swung. So this guy. Rorik, you're being attacked again. As soon as I can move, guys, I'll be over to help you. Uh, re-rolling... Well, one hit plus the... I'll re-roll that 15. Good job, dude. Uh, I think that's still missed. Hold on. Oh, he just barely, so... Two hits on his end. Uh, daring security for you, Rorik, as you're being attacked. Dairy plus a six. Uh, so that looks like two hits. Um, you tie. Uh, Rurik, do you have any kind of melee focuses? Because if you did, you would have gotten three. Well, I got a lot of focuses to fill up, so why not? Just... 
in the head. So one popular one is the Makbara, the Klingon martial art. Uh, so that's three hits. Uh, you win the exchange, so he actually takes damage, even though he attacked you. Um, so you roll um, your security plus one challenge dice in damage as you're hitting him with your hand, with your feet and hands or elbows. Uh, that'd be five challenge dice, or five d6. One, two, three. But one's effect, so armor takes one of it. Uh, his back roll takes two more of it, but you did knock him down. So he's actually knocked on the carpet. And I don't know if it matters. It's not. The only blade I would besides the detang is an ancestral mechlin. Yeah, and you didn't have that drawn. You had your uh, disruptor out. Nice. Down, down on the ground? Yep, because he, no he, uh, he got at least one effect in an armed attack, and that knocks people over. Nice. So it's actually easier to hit him in melee, but harder to shoot him in uh, at longer ranges. Uh, turn goes back to you, you guys, because that was him attacking you. All right. Uh, anybody care if Oda goes? Go for okay. it. Go for it. Doop, doop. Just to fill in some slots, I am going to use Intimidation. It's a social tool to use in combat for reference GM that's 88 in the command book. Mm -hmm. um, Oda has a focus in intimidation. Uh, he also has bold command. So I'm going to use... Uh, A presence command as a battle cry. Okay. To try and scare the bejesus out of him. Um, if I manage to pull off an injury, he becomes demoralized and gets complication on his subsequent rolls. So let's see what we do here. Uh, I'm going to give you... Earn some momentum. One two threat and one momentum for a total of three dice and to activate bold command three dice and presence command is a full 17 discipline is a five complication is standard Let's see, I'm going to re-roll the 19 with bold. There we go. Three successes. Hard to find where it says the difficulty of the task. Hold on. It's opposed. Oh, psh. I I read it. I swear. Uh, da, da, da. It's not the clearest passage, but uh, these guys don't want to be shamed out of here, so spend one. Plus, their dice aren't great for this. I get more because.
One hit. <laughs> okay, so I believe that's two momentum. For me. Yeah. And then damage it is plus two plus discipline use, so seven. Uh, for two momentum, you can affect both of them instead of just one of them. Yeah, sure, we'll do it. Let's well, gonna try a swift task, but that sounds good. And let's see what we get. Ooh. Two. Four, five, six, seven. <laughs> As Oda roars out a battle cry, the two Klingons left standing uh, seem to shirk back and look at each other like they're doubting that they should even continue fighting here. They look hesitant in their movements, a lot less assured and of their place in Stovacor. Ah, I love that lick. Uh, turn would go back to the enemy, but there's only two of them, so the turn goes back to you guys. Harkin, do you want to take it, or should I? No, or, you should go. Uh, you or, have yeah, either Rorik or Kelda. I will go then. So, um, how far can I move and what is considered close range for my disruptor pistol? Well, you, you want to stay somewhere in uh, medium to close range, so you don't want to be standing right next, uh, uh, adjacent to them, because then you're in melee range, and that increases complication of uh, shooting them. <clears throat> it makes it harder to hit them. Rather. The difficulty goes up, I want I should say. <clears throat> uh, but you can move basically anywhere on the on this board, because uh, so you can move up to medium, and medium covers most of this room. I will step up to here. Okay. Uh, Take aim, and then fire at the Klingon who is in front of Rurik. Oh, I see what you're saying, you're worried about the, uh, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, that works, that's fine. Um, so you're looking at a difficulty two task, since you're close enough that him being prone isn't helping him. Uh, yep. Okay. And I'm sorry, what was it for firing disruptor again? Uh, control security. Control security, 13. Zero successes and complication. <laughs> um... You already spent your determination, didn't you? I did not. You did not? You could to reroll those two, because otherwise you're about to shoot Rorik. Please don't shoot me. <laughs> I'm trying my best. Um. Okay. So I'll spend my determination point. Does brute strength is not the most important asset in a fight? Work for this? <laughs> I'll, I'll take it. It's like, your brute strength is what's... Deciding this, it's your uh, fine aim. Well, one success. That's at least I don't shoot Rorik. Yeah. In your concern to not shoot your uh, fellow officer uh, in superior, um, you fire a little wide, but uh, thankfully you missed your uh, the. Uh, La Rorik. Okay. Uh, turn remains to the players. The enemy has only uh, can't take its turn. That'd be Tarkin or Rorik. Oh, gladly. 
grab this car on here. All right, well, I'll go. Try to uh, essentially, I just want to stomp this last one out. <laughs> Uh, well, it's a posed roll, um, uh, daring security. Uh, because he's prone, if you succeed, you basically have one free bonus momentum that can be spent toward making the da uh, to hurt him more or reroll your dice, damage dice, that sort of thing. Because you have the advantage in the attack. Because you're stomping down at a guy who's on the ground while he's swinging up at you. Wow. In my life right We'll always spend to get an extra die, because it's to his benefit to do that. Uh, he, she'll take that roll. One, two, three, four. And you have a complication. Um, this is where I lose the eye, guys. Remember this day. This is where I lose the eye. <laughs> Uh, because he beat you by three more, I gained three threat. And from his back, he swings his bat up at you as you try to stomp down at him. The wharf batleth sweep. Wow, that's garbage roll. I'll spend one threat to reroll some of that because that's absolute garbage. Uh, rolling, re-rolling four damage dice. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, that's better. Uh, one of that's absorbed by your armor. Two more of it's absorbed because he's not swinging to kill you. Oh... You take three stress. And... So you're now down to ten stress. Wow. That's just ridiculous. Wow. <laughs> uh, turn goes to Tarkin. Okay, um, even, can I stow away my dagger and pull out Destructor? You can, yeah. yeah. And then um, I will take a focus in Disruptors, um, okay. or Disruptor Pistol, uh, small arms, and we'll fire at, um, uh, I guess this one. Oh no, that one's prone, isn't it? So the one that's standing next to the captain. Oh no, you notice he's standing. Uh, difficulty two. Yeah. Um, okay, so... Probably. So that's control security? Correct. Uh. Can I... Um, use my determination for um, perfect opportunity. You can, uh, what do you? Um, I will say that um, uh, there is no escape for traitors. <laughs> um, yeah. And so uh, I will get automatically two there and um, Are you shooting to kill him in that in that regard? Yes. I'll take my one threat. So four successes altogether. Uh, gain two momentum. Um, how many dice is this? Uh, five? Is it? Ah, oh, no, seven. Challenge. <laughs> And I will just use the additional two to reduce resistance. Um, uh, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. He gets uh, shot square in the head and falls into a quiet heap on the floor. Takin just rolls out. You will not escape us. Lore Singer cries out. The Lore Singer cries out to the remaining Klingon. If you surrender now, you may prove yourself loyal to your rightful liege house. Or you can die here a traitor. Your choice. Uh, she generated one moment for you. Praise. Nice. I actually have to look at her cheat now. Uh, where is she? Oops. Oh, it's down here. Duh. Oh, I'm right. And I should really reveal her cheat. Oops. Can I taunt the enemy really quickly? Sure. Surrender now or be impelled by my blade, for I come for your head. Uh, she's gonna spend your uh, your momentum to reroll some of your some of her dice. Very good. There you go. This guy was already pretty demoralized. He's greatly outnumbered, and he's on the ground with someone who's trying to stomp him. Uh, he throws his blade aside and uh, presents his hands. Surprisingly, dishonorably surrendering to his opponents. Or giving himself to his rightful... Uh, superiors. Depends how one looks at it. Are we out of combat? You are out of combat right now. So Oda sheaths his mech left and still holding the glaive. Strides over to the surrendered Klingon. You. Tell him anyways. Is Taos Gamola responsible for the fall of the station? What is happening? Starfleet is the one that brought that station upon us. With the destruction of your house leader, our houses have seen fit to right, rightfully claim the sector. Rasa, Gamola, all of us. Subgutta will fall today. Not to dogs like you. How do you mean the Federation brought that station on us? They planted some strange crystal aboard and used it to manipulate the power aboard and brought it down to show their might. The fact that Sivgutta failed to protect its citizens shows its weakness. I kick him in the in the ribs. And he goes unconscious from the kick. <laughs> As something rather vital breaks. Ooh. Oh, the word of a traitor cannot be trusted. We must get somewhere we can find out exactly what is going on. Hod Oda yells out Lore Singer. Lore Singer. The glaive I give to you is a recognition that you are now the house leader. What? Your father 
all your fathers were aboard that station to welcome you to your flagship. With the fall of that station and the destruction of the city, we now stand before the senior members of the House of Gutta. I've looked down at the glaive in my hands and then nod and ground it. Very well. The honor of the house is mine. Will you follow me? I turn to all everyone in the room. Put a hand on your shoulder and tell you to the beginning and to the end. As long as you need me, I'll be here. Very well. First, we must find out exactly what the situation is. Laura Singer, is the fortress uh, equipped with a communications array? You should be able to communicate. And she steps back to the podium. She touches one of the uh, steps and a, a TOS era style uh, Klingon uh, huh. console pops out of the, the, the steps and lights up with controls. From here, you can control the rudimentary systems built into this by your grandfather. For once, House Rasa's I I insistence to install uh, such things in this temple was accepted, and I am glad for it. I would like to step forward and examine the console. Sorry, say again? I would like to step forward and examine the console. Uh... Uh, it's reason engineering if you take out a scanner to scan the device, uh, the, uh, or it's inside engineering if you're trying to eyeball it. I will take out a scanner. <laughs> and Difficulty so, two. Engineering is 14. Difficulty two, you said? Yes, yes. I will take a threat to, uh, buy a die. Okay. Two successes. Uh, it appears to be a access panel to a rudimentary computer system uh, from a era long past. It still looks functional. Uh, if a what bit dated. Of, what kind of things can I do from it? Uh, in an examination, it looks like you can access uh, communications, uh, transporter systems, uh, the computer database, and you can access the communication systems. Is there any sort of uh, sensors that I can see from it? Um, very uh, limited ones. They're more designed to scan for the island for intruders or the surrounding water. But you can attempt to scan the surrounding area at a difficulty in a difficulty and complication increase. Basically trying to force the sensors to do something they're not really meant to do. I will uh, tell my captain the things that the console is capable of doing and ask what he would like to do. Determine the situation in the Bamoth system. <clears throat> and I have so much threat, so just a little bit. Well, but uh, I've been too nice. I should stop doing that now. Uh, that is a reason science roll difficulty of three. Oh, sorry. Complication of 
uh, one, uh, plus one. So basically, normally when you roll a 20, you get a complication. Now you get a complication on a range of 19 to 20. I'm going uh, to say, Tarkin, do you want to take a look at this? <laughs> I will. Okay. Uh, you don't want to do the main task. Um, it is Hazraza after all. Um, and he has a look at um, seeing whether it's fairly familiar. It's probably older than him. And I may require your assistance. Um, so is this like a sensor operation scan? Can I use that as a focus? You certainly can. So I'll add that to my list. Uh, reason and science is um, uh, 11 and 5, so 16. And um, OK. And I was hoping to get a technical expertise, is that? Uh, you can take that as a talent if you haven't already. Um, the the build the fortress doesn't roll anything, but it would let you re-roll one of your dice because a computer system is how you're doing the scan. Okay. Am I able to assist as well? Uh, yep, you would roll a uh, 1d20 with the same uh, reason science. Okay. Uh, focus. Uh, what was the complication? Uh, 19. 19, yep. Yeah. Ooh, that's not good. <laughs> Um, so that's two successes with a complication. Uh, unfortunately, that's not enough to hit the difficulty and you have a complication on the board. Uh, so, yeah. uh, you, oh, wait, oh, technical expertise. Yeah. I'll re-roll the ninth. Okay, I think that's enough, right? Well, it's enough for success, isn't it? Uh, do I have to succeed? What was that? Plus, yeah. Uh, three hits? Yeah, you hit it. Never mind. Oops, I was about to something. This is the current situation in the Bamoth system. This is Bamoth 2, Bamoth 1. A, a house uh, ship is currently in space with its uh, shields and weapons powered on, as there's a bunch of Cavort class uh, birds of prey uh, on approach to Bamoth 2. Uh, these gray line, these gray circles indicate the asteroid, the class two asteroid uh, belt uh, and field that surrounds the outer bit of the moth. So all of the uh, cavorts are closing in on attack runs. It looks like on the manga. Uh, course looks like they're heading straight to the moth. Like they don't seem to be paying much attention to the manga. Can you identify those ships? To what houses do they belong? Um, it, are there any identifying markers, or do we need to roll again? Uh, well, since you are the science officer, uh, you have the benefit of getting a free question since you're doing a sensor roll. So, okay, uh, can we identify? Uh, I guess all of the ships, whether they belong into different houses or just one. House Ba Anan, House Rasa, House Kamola. 
It appears they are from all the houses. Regrettably, House Raza is also bound for Bamoth. Hmm. Even are they, uh, are they on an attack course for the manga? They're all heading towards Bamoth, too, is what it looked like. Like, straightforward, not really paying that much attention. The same feet, no. It appears their trajectory is for the planet and not for the ship. We must do something about this. Can you access the central database for House Subkita? Um, we'll check. I will give you my command code. Okay, so Tarkin accesses it, has a look at whether it's connected to the network. Uh, it would seem that the central network is badly damaged since most of the central facilities were in Bamoth Central. Uh, it would actually take a task to uh, reconnect the link to the the planetary network. Because the two major links for it were the station and the capital city, and they've both been taken out. It appears odd. Tack. The networks are severed. Uh, there will be some repairs that are required before we can access the information. Mm. I'll tap my comm badge. Oda of House Subkita to the manga. Uh, spending 10 threat. <laughs> He's either ending the scene or we're all about to die. <laughs> me. Get me on that ship until I can defend us. As the call to the ship goes out, the ship dives into the orbit of the planet and in through the atmosphere. Not that small. Oh, it's all sleek and stealthy. It swoops. I can't see it. All I see is the island. The non-standard. Oh. <laughs> Ooh, very nice. I can't wait to get my hands on her weapon systems. Oh. I'm not sure we're gonna. <laughs> it fires its torpedoes upon the fortress, and r explosions rip and roar th across the building. Is it shield still up? Who shields? The manga. Uh, it would appear so, unfortunately. Everybody needs to give me a fitness security uh, security roll. Difficulty two, to flee the fortress before the rubble caves in and uh, does you some serious harm. <laughs> no. huh. All right, whoever has a real high fitness security go first so that we can maybe earn some momentum for those who aren't so hot. I just rolled. Two 
serious with this seven garbage. <laughs> Fifteen. Um, do you give yourself some sort of focus, like I don't know, maybe survival or athletics? You might be able to turn that one success into two. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Not a value. I will do that as a focus, uh, because we're just going out into the actual wilderness of the uh, wilderness survival. Yeah. Sure. I grew up in the wilds. I wish I kept your tokens on there. That would be smart. Oh, well. You merely adopted the dark. I was born here. <laughs> <laughs> Too small. You had to learn to adapt to social distancing and online communication. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was bred to it. Oops! Oh God! <laughs> I'm okay. I'm okay. Okay. All right. So uh, yes, Kazo does hit it on the head because of the focus. I don't believe Torg is in a good place right now. Actually, 14 bolts. Well, how many? When 14 oh, you're fine. Success? Yeah, you're fine. Yeah, those both successes. Sorry, I thought for some reason I thought your fitness was lower. I don't know why I thought that. Take a throw. No, my fitness is a 12. Oop. I'm extremely fit for survival. Oop. Can I? Was there a chance that I could take another focus during this moment? Ah, uh, you could. Uh, I want to do something in the like realm of command, so like drill instructor or uh, maybe fitness coach. I want to to uh, get these guys up and. <laughs> okay, I I'm got a Take survival as a focus. Okay. And I earned a momentum with my roll. Can uh, I? So it's there, spend. somebody wants to add it to their dice pool. Can I spend that momentum, please? Mm -hmm. I generally want to generate it well, of course. Uh, and I can roll first and then decide whether I want to add a focus. You can, yep. man to see anyone that hasn't made it out. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, minus three, because you're a Klingon with armor on, so that is... Uh, math, three stress. Because this is a new scene, all your stress tracks got put up back to max, so Tarkin is sitting on having suffered three stress so far. As bits of the building smack and smash into you as you're the last one out. Bits of flame lick at your face, but, uh... Um, Tarkin hey, shields his head as he uh, comes out and then um, uh, manages to somewhat trip on <laughs> some of the rubble, but then dust himself off as he leaves the building. Deeper into the island! Quickly! They'll destroy us if they uh, keep firing from there. But they can't come deeper into the island. Now without risking the island's defenses. You can already see phaser arrays, uh, old phaser arrays firing at the shields of the ship. It's glowing bright blue in the sky. Do you know a path that avoids the booby traps? Torg would approach the Lord Singer asking if there's a ship available. 
She gives Torg a look. Looks at Oda, looks at Torg. There is, actually. Get me to it. And I will take these patak out of the sky. Remember your place. Let's go. It begins leading you into the wilderness. And with that fateful flight into the high mountains, seeking out the last ship that could raise any hope against the traitors, we will end today's episode. Cool. That was fun. See if we a traitor or a, a, a pre Katinga D7. <laughs> <laughs> for all of you who are watching out there, thanks for watching with us, and you'll see us all next time. Take it easy. As long as I was...